I'm sorry that you are so mean to yourself. I didn't plan to take my own life. I found myself in the midst of a separation. I couldn't see my children regularly. My closest friend for 30 years, I received the news that he died from cancer. In this country, the numbers of uh, when it comes to suicides, when it comes to uh, homelessness, when it comes to prisons, the numbers of men in these situations are astronomically higher. No matter where you land in the temperamental landscape, you're going to have your associated faults and temptations. And you're going to have your associated proclivity to your particular form of mental illness. It, it felt like a gut punch. I, I couldn't catch my breath for days, and I withdrew. But if you're like us, you have some of this that we have, this ism, this alcoholism, this, this uncomfort. It's really an uncomfort that just lives in us. Um, yeah, you, you're probably going to be real hard on yourself. You know, I think I was always re extremely hard. People, that's the number one note people have given me. And you're so hard on yourself. Into my car at home, I was a different animal. I didn't talk about it. It was a cold night in early spring and and I remember it so clearly. My mind was racing. I couldn't sleep. I got in the car the next morning. Things were spiraling in my brain constantly. I was it. I completely broke down. I just needed to let let loose. I just needed this to come out. I felt felt like a failure. Um, sorry. <laughs> so it was tough. One of the hardest things sometimes for the human to do is get to the point where they stop lying to themselves, where they tell themselves the truth. They speak the truth to themselves. Now, you got to face the reality of who you are. You got to face the reality of what you are. All right? And, uh, and nobody's going to tell you that like you yourself will tell you that. Um, you want to tell yourself the truth, but you want to tell yourself the truth in understanding and forgiveness. That if I did everything right, that my father would stay alive. That's what I thought for some reason as a kid. I, you know, nobody explained to me what was going on or how things worked or that dad was getting, you know, I just knew my dad was older and that he was not going to be alive for a long time. And, as a child, I thought maybe if I'm perfect, if I'm perfect, you know, that my life would be different. I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety. They say that recognizing you need help is the biggest step. But realizing that I was not alone and, and reaching out, that's what saved me. It's not hide all that in the fog. So you know where you are, so you can figure out where you're going, and, and then practice doing that. And then as you practice doing that, then that's what you become, and that will lower your proclivity to negative emotion. What it means to be a man, um, a modern man, and that it's okay to, for life not to be exactly how I expected it.